the subject of this video is a little bit different to my normal ones and it's actually one that is causing me a lot of upset and problems and I'm showing it because from what I hear a lot of you also have some of these issues and it's to help identify this problem which is weed killer in in this case horse manure and hay so the weed killer is has been sprayed onto fields of grass which normally are harvested as hay for horses not always occasionally cows but from my experience it's much more horses apparently though it is being used a bit for cows now but basically the stuff comes from hay that's one thing to be really clear about this is not a weed killer that's sprayed on cereal so you won't get it in straw for example certainly not that i've come across anyway um, therefore bedding and all that kind of thing that animals are bedded on you know that's fine but it's what they've been eating so the in this case is the weed killer by the way is active ingredient aminopyralid we'll put that in writing so you can just see the weed killer itself will be called something different like forefront or they funky names but this active ingredient in there was in the hay that was eaten by the horse the horse digests the hay and amazingly <laughs> this stuff passes through people wonder well, what does it do to the horses and nobody's recorded any issues there so this then comes out in the horse manure the poo it might sit in a heap for a few months for years even but it doesn't break down this is where the problem is and again as far as i'm aware you know i'm not world authority on this but i have read up quite a bit you can find out quite a lot on the internet too most um, chemicals most synthetic chemicals used in farming do break down fairly quickly either by microbes in say compost or manure heaps or in soil and the constituents are not harmful whereas this stuff only breaks down after it's been in contact with soil microbes for a period of time up to a year as far as i can see that means that it's still an active weed killer in the compost in this case which i put on in march we had chervil and coriander here over the winter in this block in the middle and that was super abundant lovely growth everything all fine we twisted out the chervil and coriander around the middle of march Meanwhile, I'd sown these beans in February in the greenhouse and we planted them here in March. It's now the middle of May, two months later. And <laughs> look at the result. It's really pretty sad. And the symptom is what you can see with this curling inwards of the new growth. These, these didn't look too bad. They were just slow until about 10 days ago and then I suddenly realized this very dramatic curling and stunting of the tip of the plant and the new leaves just can't form this somehow this chemical blocks the ability of plants to photosynthesize so they just run out of ability to get food basically and it's a very disheartening sight you can see some more than others uh, but it's to help you identify and that's the symptom more than anything which will help you identify this particular problem people say to me why well, do you know it's that you know it could, could be someone says sour soil or you know come on look at the rest of it uh, or it could be the weather well again look at the rest of it you know in, in the context of everything here and in your case of whatever else you're growing will help you to identify and the susceptible crops it helps to know particularly susceptible are legumes so that's peas broad beans french beans runner beans if you see anything like this on your legumes that tells you it also means that you can use legumes uh, including clover actually as a test crop so if you had a bit of manure but you haven't yet say got it on the site you know in a manure you've got an eye on go and get a bit put it in a pot sow some peas or beans or clover or whatever or plant some if you've got plants you will know fairly soon whether that manure compost is safe um, just by the way in my compost there wasn't much of this material this is not horse manure here, it's my own compost. And what happens is we go, I go over to my neighbor's yard, the stable yard, and we get sweepings to put in the compost loo where urine goes on the straw mostly, and then I put that on the compost heap, and then it composts and we put it on the ground. So I thought that's all natural process, except that what I didn't realize that this stuff was in, we must've got a bit of hay 
and a bit of manure with these sweepings. Gives you an idea of its power. And it, the other susceptible crops are solanums. So in this case, tomatoes. So solanums is tomatoes, potatoes, aubergines, peppers, for example. And here I did a little test with compost from the same heap that I suspected. Two different composts, in fact. That's the one from the heap, and that's mushroom compost, nine months old. So it's not potting compost, but you can see the mushroom compost plant. Well, that's pretty normal growth, I would say. And if you look at this one, you know, if you didn't know, and at first glance you might think, well, yeah, that's growing, it's looking nice. I mean, it has grown. But if you look at the new leaves, it's, it's starting to kick in now more. Just in the last few days, those new leaves are not developing correctly, and that will stunt the plant growth more from now. You can see it on the side shoots as well, because that's new leaves, basically. Uh, it's inhibiting that, and the, even the older leaves, slightly paler green, so that, that I would call a mild infestation. I've seen worse, because this did happen to me before, and I've been jolly careful, actually, with this horse mirror. I'd test it myself. There was just one batch got through that I missed. And I'll just finish by mentioning the effects of this on other plants. So it doesn't affect every vegetable so dramatically as solanums and legumes. The, there's one vegetable you can grow which is not affected as far as I can see, is brassicas, or one group of vegetables, so cabbages, kale, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, rocket, they're all fine. Beets, like beetroot, chard, spinach, not so good, not so dramatic as this, but the leaves will go rather yellow. Um, lettuce, though, Asteraceae family, therefore asters, quite a few flowers. Dahlias also really quite badly affected. So the implications are bad, you know, in flower borders as well as vegetable gardens. And there's a lot more needs to be said on this. Um, I'm hoping that this video might spur some people to action. I mean, I'm doing what I can by publicizing it. I don't have a lot of time to go out on the road campaigning. I know that there are court issues actually ongoing about it already in the UK. Uh, so I don't know how much I'm allowed to say about that, but it, it needs sorting out. This weed killer should not be allowed. This is Dow Chemical Company. If any of you are watching this, I call on you to stop selling this horrible stuff. At the moment, it's illegal. It's illegal for farmers who use this to sell the produce they grow, like hay, without <clears throat> an attestation form saying that they have used it so that anyone buying the hay knows that it is on the hay because it's acknowledged that it does this to plants. A lot of farmers are not doing that. So there's no paper trace and so nobody knows. And if you get hold of horse manure, for example, it's a random, it's a lottery. It may or may not have it. I used to say there was three, 5% chance and you'd be pretty safe, but always do a test just in case. And from what I'm hearing now, it's more than 5%, I would say. There's a lot of problems with it. And it's really sad because horse manure is such a great thing to grow food with. You know, it's a natural byproduct of horses. I know there are vegans who don't like all that. You know, that's another story, fair enough, and I'll accept that. But, you know, for those of us who don't mind horse keeping and what have you, horse manure is a great thing to use. And at the moment, in the UK at least, it's pretty risky. And I call on the authorities to stop this and make it safe again. You know, it's really harming food production as well. You, you have a duty there, please.